from their encounters with races from other planets. The information is the activation. Let's awaken this world together. We are the forever students, and we will not be silent. We are the ones that we've been waiting for. It's pretty well. Welcome, everybody, to Full Spectrum Universe. My name is Rob Yox. This is the embattled broadcast from behind enemy lines in the once great state of New York. Welcome, 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 everyone. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the 12 universal laws. And one of the things I want to start by prefacing this is saying that this is not a suggestion. This is a way of life, right? This is how we use our potential and our ability to navigate the waters that we call earth and reality. And it, it gets absolutely wild out there. And by atoning and abiding by these specific laws, it will give you the ability to transmute, to deflect, to discern, but to also understand. And that's one of the things that I think is so important. And there's been a lot of people who have been doing this lately, talking about the universal laws. And I think it's ever so important that we reaffirm these laws within ourselves, you know, daily, monthly, weekly, to go back and read them and understand. Tonight's going to be a very general overview. But within that overview, we're going to give you a little bit of advice on what you should probably do to attain that specific law and also some real world examples of how these laws are being played or played out within our daily lives. But before we do that, I have a quick statement that I would like to make. And this statement, for some that don't know what's going on, it may seem like it's a bit off base. But as of late, since we started doing this information and started bringing more people to the full spectrum family that has garnered basically, you know, being noticed by people who are of the service to others. And there are also people who are service to self that have garnered notice of this program and this broadcast. Now, there are entities out there who don't like what we do. They don't like the fact that we try and help people and we try and bring positivity and peace of mind to people. And I've noticed a lot of things in my personal life beginning to change or things coming up that seem peculiar. And I just want to let those people who are of service to self, I want to put them on notice very quickly before we go any further. If you think that you're watching me, you are sadly mistaken. I've always known who you were, and I've been watching you while you attempt to watch me. Let's just put it at that. So you have been put on notice. There is no way, shape, or form, or any fashion that you will get me to capitulate to any of your ideas or become buddy-buddy with anybody of that persuasion. So your advances have fallen on deaf ears, and I, I am the antithesis or the opposite of what you are. So I will never be beside you. And here's how I see it, right? And I know this is, this is a little bit out of character for me, but I am not important. Me, personally, there is no importance with this person. I sit behind the microphone because my face doesn't matter. The information matters. I will take hand grenades in the face all day long and stand on that front line so that the people who come after me have the ability to attain and achieve whatever their dreams, hearts, whatever it is. I will stand on the front line, even if by myself, which I know I won't be, but even if by myself to stop what you people are doing. And I will be there at every at every turn to negate whatever you're doing right so i just wanted to put that out there for those people who are watching that feel the need to to recognize who i am especially in public or at work and decide to just be kind of strange about it but i i, I see you i know who you are so we're going to transmute that energy. And this is another reason why this is so important. This 
these universal laws are so important because by abiding by these laws, I know that they're not even in my league. They'll never be in my league. And for the people who don't go by these laws, I'm not saying that there isn't a chance for you to attain that satisfaction of going through the laws and, and you know, maintaining your, your ability to become more of the positive persuasion. But this is a sort of like a, 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 you know, like the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy of consciousness, spirituality, and awareness. And the ability to not let those exterior stimuli get you you know, out of out of sorts or out of whack. If you understand this, it, it becomes more clear of what your mission is, how you achieve that, and the steps you can take to kind of negate what they're doing to you. And and I think that that's such an important tool, such an important tool. So I put up some visuals. They're not, you know, it's only 12 slides, but it's just while I go through reading and talking to you about what I believe, I don't want you to sit there and just watch me because it's not, again, it's not about me. It's about the importance of the message. That is the biggest, biggest takeaway. I hope everybody takes away from these broadcasts. It's not about me or anything like that. It's about the information that's being relayed because you give it, I give it to you, you give it to others. And a lot of people in the audience right now probably already know a ton about the universal laws. That's why I'm kind of doing a generalization and bringing more example so we can see how it plays out. And when we see how it plays out, we, we start to, to really like surface this awareness of how the universe interacts with us. You know, we talk a lot about consciousness and awareness and inner standing and understanding also comes from the exterior stimuli engaging your inner self and how you can maneuver within those operations so you can essentially you know get yourself to a place of prominence within yourself not for others to see but for inside of yourself and that awareness does so so without further ado let's bring in the slides and here we are so there's 12 universal laws right and we're going to give you real world examples so the first law which is the law that we all know is the law of divine oneness and that everything is connected, okay? We're all connected. You, the animal kingdom, other humans, insects, plants, ET races, planets, even the cosmos as a whole. This may be hard to believe because our egos are so good at highlighting our individuality and our differences. We are separate individuals, of course, right? But that's just looking at one plane of reality, the physical. You and I are both physical expressions of the same energy. In fact, every living being is a physical manifestation of the same source energy. This is the concept of divine oneness. And a side note, and this is from Thick not Han, right? That he's, I'm going to reference quotes throughout the entire episode to kind of, you know, conceptualize what we're talking about. And it says, people normally cut reality into compartments and are so unable to see the interdependence of all phenomena. To see one in all and all in one is to break through the great barrier which narrows one's perception of reality. That is a quote from Thich Nhat Han. Okay, so let's let's dig a little bit deeper. Because just, be, you know, saying that and having context to it is is part of the understanding part or understanding of these concepts. So if we're all connected, when your thoughts, actions and behaviors impact the greater all, we tend to believe that we can walk around in a bubble of our own lives without consideration for how our actions impact those around us, our communities, and our environment. The result is we live in a deeply divided society, and our environment is turning on us. Sometimes the impact is obvious and immediate, and you get into an argument with a friend and feel remorse afterwards, and sometimes the impact is indirect. And you may never actually notice it, but you hold the door open for a stranger who, unbeknownst to you, 
feels invisible to the world, whether that be anybody that you know or somebody around you. And the great gesture or the greatest gesture of simply acknowledging this person's presence can brighten the entire day. And this is the part about being mindful of how your interactions with everybody should it, it it's essentially bringing forward that everybody matters everything matters but we are all connected on such a level that it's hard to describe anything but knowing that we're all one and that's the universal oneness and it goes a lot deeper especially in the law of one we could talk about raw and the, the deepness of it and and there are so many facets that we could talk about with each law and how it kind of derives from some sort of saying or some sort of feeling. But like I said, we're going to do a general overview and maybe down the line we'll explore each one individually and kind of go really, really deep on it. But this is a good this is a good way to keep either listening to this episode and, and keeping it in the forefront of your mind because it's how we interact and engage, and we have to be mindful of all of that. So a little bit of advice on the first law is to be mindful of your thoughts, actions, and behavior, for they send waves throughout the universe. And since we're all connected, what goes around comes around in some form or another, right? <clears throat> number one is a very, very powerful law. So number two is the law of vibration. Everything has a unique vibration or frequency. Now, one of the things we're going to see happening is we're going to see these laws connect with another law, right? But at the same time, they're held separate, but they all come together. All of these laws are applicable in practice with each other. That's how it works. So there's a uniqueness, just like we just talked about, of each individual law. But there's also a connection and congruency between all of them. And when you use all of them together is when you truly achieve your highest frequency or vibrational self. So I just wanted to make that known while we're going through. And, and we can see here from color coding, but also from frequency, that that. There is a lot of uniqueness in every living organism, in every inanimate object, even though feeling, you know, feeling and desire has a unique vibration unto itself. Everything is different when it comes to emotion in the sense of the way your body reacts to it, the way that your exterior, you know, your exterior and interior both react to specific emotional fre frequencies and harmonies. But we're going to talk about, you know, we know that this has been proven by science in the physical world. But basically when, we, when the scientists set up plants and they talk to those plants, the ones that were berated didn't grow at the same rate that the ones that were shown love consistently. So they were able to show that emotional balance also has a tremendous part in walking through life and, and attaining what you want. So, you know, solids have a lower frequency than liquids and gases. What we per perceive as a color is just a frequency of light. Red has the lowest frequency and violet has the highest. This concept also applies to our thoughts and feelings. Emotions such as love, joy, and gratitude vibrate at a higher frequency than grief, despair, and anger. And here's an example of it. Have you ever have you ever heard someone say, I get a weird vibe from that guy or I have such a good vibes about this? That's the law of vibration. It's, a, it's the law of vibration at work. Since we ourselves are vi vibrational beings, we can intuitively sense the vibes of other people's and situations. Traditionally, we're not taught to use our intuition. But if we listen carefully, there's a lot of knowledge already within us. The trick is to learn how to tap into that intuition. And Nikolai Tesla said something that was kind of very, it was not kind of, it was very profound. And if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Nikolai Tesla. And we all know that the genius that Tesla was. So if you're wondering, 
you know, where you're vibrating at at any given moment, there's an easy way to find out. What are you thinking? How do you feel? What's happening around you? When we're vibrating low, you'll find stress, anxiety, frustration, sadness, and anger. And you're short with people and generally aren't very pleasant to be around. When you're vibrating at a high frequency, you have light, optimistic, eager, and grateful. In this space, things tend to go to naturally go well. You know, the subway arrives just at, just on time. You're walking down the stairs. Strangers smile at you. Life feels pretty good, of course. You know, but bad things happen, right? And we can react as we're programmed to, but we always have a choice in choosing our reaction. Yelling at the guy who cut us off is an understandable reaction, but it's a low vibrational one. Taking a deep breath, and choosing to react differently and then letting the incident go is a higher vibrational alternative. And here's one of the things that I practice all the time. If somebody comes to me with something or I'm in a situation that essentially makes me want to react emotionally right off the bat, like just jump out of my skin to react at it. I stop. I take a breath. Because my first answer is usually an emotional one. My second answer is usually a logical one. So instead of blurting out the first thing that I'm thinking, I take a moment, I relax, and then I think about it again and wait for the second thing to come to me. Because that's usually the one of a higher vibrational state. And, you know, myself and Omar, we talk about this a lot. We pr practiced this with our subconscious. We trained our subconscious to essentially go to the positive and not let those negative things kind of come in and fester. We, we let them come in, we acknowledge them, but then we tried to look at the positive side of it. So we tried to reverse what was actually happening. And it actually makes it so that we actually go there more often now than to the side of emotional reaction, right? So there's a lot of, of temperament and attitude that comes along with being a human in today's society or being an entity in today's society, being able to control those emotions and kind of seeing the brighter side or the brighter picture and letting go of things is, is such a, a, it's such a hard thing to do. But once we acknowledge it and we really think about it, it becomes easier and easier with practice. And this is why this is all so important, right? So a little bit of advice for the second law. So be aware of your intuitive vibes on situations and be mindful of what vibes you're generating through your thoughts and actions. So we have to be present in the now to understand ourselves enough that we're not rippling or ripple affecting others around us. And this is what I mean by the laws. They all come together. They essentially all come from the same position. They're just different aspects of that position. And that position is that we're all connected. But we also have to be tolerant and mindful of what we do, say, and even feel, right? And that's where we're garnering more, more towards the side of higher vibration or higher vibratory thinking. So the next one is the law of attraction. What is like unto itself is drawn. Now, this one is probably one of the more, I want to say one of the more underdog laws. But this one is ever present in every moment of every day. And, you know, going back to the law of vibration, we know that everything has a unique vibration. So the law of attraction says that that vibration with the same frequencies are drawn to each other. Higher frequency thoughts attract more of the same, just as lower frequency thoughts attract more of the same. When you can maintain a high vibration, you'll notice that things just naturally seem to go your way and that, th that the things that may typically irk you 
really don't seem to matter anymore. You know, most people like to use the law of attraction techniques to attract things into their life, maybe a partner, a better job, more money, etc. This is sometimes successful, but oftentimes not. And you're going to say to yourself, wait a minute, I thought you were telling me about the good stuff. I am, but let me let me get through this part because you'll understand it more. If it was, if it was, we'd all be living in our dream homes and be happy with our bodies, but we're not. There are many reasons that people don't find results with the traditional law of attraction teachings. One reason is that they don't realize that there are 11 other laws to consider and they work in conjunction with this one law. So another reason that, th that they're not you know, match is that they're not matching their frequency to which desire that they want. Wanting it is not enough. You need to embody that frequency that you're, that's your desire. So <clears throat> people say, you know, I tried the law of attraction. It didn't work, but that's because there are so many, so many other laws that you have to apply to make the law of attraction is one of the later laws, right? <clears throat> even though it's in the top three, it's one that is impactful later because essentially what you're doing is you have to practice all of the other things. And then when the, when you put all of that good into the atmosphere, all of it comes back. And that's, that's what we say all the time. You put good out, you get good back, but it has to be, more than that it's not that easy right if it was that easy again we'd all have it this all takes work and when we're willing to put the work in we get those optimal results that we're looking for so you know we get what we vibe not what we ask for and i'm sure everyone knows someone who can relate to this so we'll just use an example Brad wants to attract the woman of his dreams, yet complains that all the good ones are taking and that the dating apps are a waste of time. Brad's doubt is not aligned with the frequency of love, and especially not aligned with the frequency of love that he's seeking. He's giving off vibes of lack and frustration as opposed to abundance and love. What he needs to do is get clear about his own personal energy around the top of love and align his thoughts and actions with that with that topic. Now, this doesn't mean he should pretend he's not frustrated. I'd suggest that he would find a way to genuinely pivot his way from the frustration to love. But that's for him to figure out, not for any of us, right? This is what I mean by resonating and vibing with that frequency as opposed to just asking for it and wanting it. It's not that simple. So advice on this specific law would be you are a magnet and your experiences are manifestations of the energy that you give off either consciously or subconsciously. Look around you and realize that you're attracting the circumstances of the reality you're living right now. Now, that's powerful. That's powerful. So as we keep going, we're understanding, right? But we also have to understand how the universe interacts with us. And this is why it's, it's very important to go over these laws. We've never done a universal law show. And this is, everybody could say, you know, it seems real beginner, but it's always good to, to know where we came from and to kind of go back and reaffirm those values and that we set to what we believe is our higher consciousness, right? And our higher vibratory thinking. So let's keep going. Next, the law of correspondence. Your inner world will determine what manifests in your outer world. This is another. So they're all super important. But there are a few that stick out, right? This is one of them. As above, so below. This is one of my life's mantras. As a simple reminder that what's going on in my thought patterns, beliefs, and feelings is directly corresponding 
to what I perceive in the physical outer world. This is why it's so important to do the inner work first. The tricky part is that we need to be aware of what's going on in there in the first place. And as many of us are riddled with subconscious limiting beliefs that we've been carrying since childhood, we have to let those go. There's a lot of program in our subconscious that even applies to the next thought that you think while under a specific, let's say, situation, your brain is going to automatically go to a place. And whether that place is either is harmful or constructive is up to the beholder, right? So it's all with shedding programming and shedding that programming and retraining our subconscious to believe that it is not limited to anything of this plane of existence is where we begin with this, right? So talk about something as an example, and we're going to talk about money, right? Everybody wants money. Now, when I say this, I'm saying money as essentially energy. Money is a barter that gives you, there's an energy system when it comes to money. <clears throat> but we do need monetary value in the sense of dollar bills and whatever, wherever you're from to survive. Now, while we may not like that and we may want more of a communal style of, of living, this is the truth. This is the truth of what it is right now, right? <clears throat> so it, it's one of those topics that is typically entangled with deep-seated limiting beliefs. We want more money, but we're never but, but we've never had enough money. We'll never have enough money, right? We are filled with envy when our neighbor announces a fifty thousand dollar renovation. We say things like must be nice when our friends can afford things that we can't. And in all these cases, you're coming from a place of fear and lack, which are certainly not vibrations that will attract an abundance of anything. And left unchecked, these belief patterns manifest in our external reality as something like, let's say, a parking ticket, an overdue bill, an unexpected expense. And this, of course, just reinforces the belief and keeps the cycle going. So a quote from Wayne Dwyer, or Wayne Dyer, sorry, is, you don't attract what you want, you attract what you are powerful that's powerful because it makes sense it's true so instead we need to align the vibration of abundance from the inside first and then the external reality will respond accordingly this certainly isn't easy when it comes to some topics that we stress about but it's amazing how quickly things can change when these topics become little to no resistance, right? When we start to understand how it works. Many of us aren't aware of our limiting beliefs, of what's all knotted up in our vibrations. This is why we meditate. It's very important to meditate and help getting that clear and quieting the mind. This is important. So some advice on this specific law would be, if you want to change your external circumstances, you need to do the inner work first. Get still, get clear, then watch your, your circumstances begin to change. As above, so below. We are the microcosm to the cosmos, which is the macro, right? Same philosophy, same philosophy. So <clears throat> before we get into the next law, so I mean, has everybody feeling so far about understanding this? So we feel like we're getting a good sense of what these mean and some of the things that we all need to work on to sort of better ourselves and help ourselves to achieve that limitless potential. It's there. It's ours for the taking. We just have to figure out how to access it. And using these are ways to come in contact with that higher vibratory self. And that is it has a monetary value that's beyond measure, right? Money goes so far, 
but being able to touch the light is potential and limitless. It's it's beyond, right? It's beyond. So, and and here's the thing too: is we're not perfect beings. We all have work. Even the gurus, the spiritual gurus out there, have work to do and to maintain this harmony of the universe and self, right? So it takes a lot. It takes a lot. Let's keep going. So the next one is the law of action. You must take action to get results. And this one is, it, it's very straightforward, right? And this is what it means to take action. We're going to talk about action in somewhat of a different way than just going and doing whatever. Like it's not, it's not, it's not what it means. It does, but it doesn't. And as nice as it would be to sit on your butt and meditate and things, you know, things into your reality start to be, you know, rainbows and unicorns, it doesn't work that way. While the vibrational aspect is a big piece of the puzzle, the actual results inspired action is required. The key word here is inspired action. Inspired actions are actions that are aligned with the things you're truly passionate about. You'll know because the work should be challenging yet enjoyable rather than feel like a struggle. That is met with, a, with frustration and anxiety, right? That struggle that doesn't feel good is met with frustration and anxiety. Again, we're referencing the higher vibratory thinking and the lower vibratory thinking. So we have to put ourselves into a, we have to take action and put ourselves into a position where we're expressing things that we're truly passionate about. This is what I do all the time, right? Just to bring it back to myself. This is cathartic. What I'm doing right now is cathartic. This is my inspired action. I get up here. I explore consciousness. I explore hidden histories and realities. So every time that I'm doing research for a show, it is never work because I truly, truly am passionate and enjoy it. So I'm never truly working, right? The only time I'm working is when I'm going to my nine to five job and, and lifting boxes all day long. But that's also something that I relish in because it's attuning my body to be in a physical position where I, I want to be. So I also find joy in that as well. And it's learning to enjoy that. At first, I hated it. My body's hurting. I'm sore. But it's it becomes something different when you can find the positives in it. And then when you're going into those situations like a job like that, you begin to enjoy it and you relish in it because it's doing something to help you. So I'm taking action to correct the position, essentially, of me having a sort of, I guess, I guess negative feel for it and turning it into the positive, which is, again, going through the laws is what we're supposed to be doing. So <clears throat> any successful person will tell you that their success came with a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. And that's not meant to scare you. It's meant to inspire you, right? Writers will often say that hours go by unnoticed when they're writing because the labor is a labor of love. They work hard, but they're not suffering through it. The actions may or may not turn into a bestseller and, in fact, may never even be seen by the light of day. But the achievement is not in the result, but in the way that they've learned in the process. When you're aligned with something that you really want, the work won't seem drudging or drudgingly, right? So there's another really nice quote that I like from Jen Cicero. <clears throat> Your desires are brought to you via thought, and you receive them by deciding to take action. Jen Cicero. Sometimes even the smallest action will open up a slightly bigger opportunity. And then that will lead to something else that moves you closer to your goals and so on. It's not always obvious. So the trick is to use your intuition and not overthink it or to let yourself get in the way of it. We're raised 
think that the results come from hard work, which is true. But we get to decide whether that work is a struggle or simply a process of memory. And that's what I'm talking about, right? Attuning my physical body to that kind of work became enjoyable because I'm mastering my physical body, right? So some advice on this one would be to take stock of the things you're doing in your life. Are, you, are they aligned with your desires? If so, does it feel like a challenge or a struggle? Challenge is good, but struggle is a sign that you need to ease up a bit. You need to rethink that. So there's a lot of great in this. And when we get to the last one, it's, called, it's you know part of trusting the process. And we say that all the time. Trust the process. And that's what this is. So as we get to the next one, which is six, the law of cause and effect. Every action has a reaction. And this one is very, very real. Very, very real. <clears throat> so the principle that one's intentions and actions influence their future or influence the future of the individual is, is also an omnipresent when it comes up with many other spiritual traditions. Karma is a popular example of this. I think almost every culture around the world has some form of you reap what you sow or what goes around comes around in its lexicon. Going back to the first universal law, we know that nothing we think or do is in isolation since we're all energetically connected. Whether good or bad, our thoughts and actions will be reflected back to us in some form. And now this quote may seem like it's not applicable, but it is. So this is Ralph Waldo Emerson. And he says, shallow men believe in luck. Strong men believe in cause and effect. Think about that. Think about how that fits in. Kind of strange, right? But it's, it's, it's wild. It's wild how that, how that works. So if you want to be loved, love those around you. If you want to receive abundance, Give generously. If you want to live a healthy life, eat well and exercise regularly. If this is so simple, why do we have a time with it? I think awareness of our actions, thoughts, and intentions has a lot to do with it. We're often on autopilot when it comes to our thoughts. So we don't recognize the opportunity to upgrade them to yield more favorable results. Awareness is key. Awareness is key. The issue is that we're not always aware of our thought patterns. And then we wonder how the circumstances ended up happening to us. Crying out such as, why me? Is a low vibration victim mentality that left unchecked will keep delivering experiences that make us feel victimized. Instead of why me, take a breath and ask a more empowering question. What did I do to contribute to this? And be honest with yourself about answering that. When we become accountable for our circumstances, instead of being victims of them, we begin to see that we are not the puppets, but we are, in fact, the puppet master. Right? So this is about taking responsibility for your life and getting into the awareness of aligning your thoughts and actions with the result you're seeking to obtain. So some advice for this law would be to take a look at your life and examine how your intentions, thoughts, and actions have contributed to what you're experiencing. Take the opportunity to make a better choice next time and then watch all of those negative circumstances turn into positive ones. This is a tremendous law. This one is another super, super important law, right? I forgot to mention this, guys. Share this out. This may help somebody in a way that you have absolutely no idea. Share this out on every platform. It's worth it. People's reactions to hearing some of these laws gives them that aha uh -huh moment, which turns them to the awakening of their potential. So share this out. We'll awaken the world together. It's worth it. I think so. So law number seven, the law of compensation. 
you will be compensated based on what you give. Now, here, here again, this works in conjunction with you reap what you sow. What you put out, you get back, right? Potential action, belief, result. This is a action potential. So <clears throat> this is an extension of the law of cause and effect, specific to compensation in the physical world. The good, like abundance, relationships, and opportunities. This law states that we will be blessed according to the good deeds we perform and we value and the value in which we provide, right? So when we show generosity to others, we'll be compensated with generosity in return. Keep in mind that compensation comes in many forms, not just bucks of cash, a beautiful home, a Ferrari, or getting paid to chill on the beach. Compensation also comes in the form of blessings, such as good health, loyal friends, a loving family, a teacher or mentor, a job opportunity, a million-dollar idea, and so on, right? So often, we give to others what we think they deserve. That mindset is fine, but it doesn't translate to abundance, right? However, if we shift the mindset to over-delivering and exceeding expectations, we will be compensated accordingly. So what does that mean, right? So when you're out there and we're working, let's say we work as a waiter. And when you go to a table, those people are going to evaluate you on the job that you did. And that will, will be contingent on how much tip they give you. So what is what are we talking about? If those people see you as I'll, you know, under delivering, your tip is going to reflect that. If they see you as exceeding their expectations, they may even talk to the owner and get you a raise. But their tip will translate into that exceeding of expectations. So we have to attack and approach things in that manner, that no matter what it is, we were going to over deliver and exceed in expectations when we do it. And therefore, the universe will compensate us accordingly, right? So some advice on this one would be you get out of life what you put into it. So bring your best self. Do to whatever you're going to do and aim for the best version of yourself you can. Be generous, be kind, and then graciously accept it with open arms when it comes back. Now, again, we use a sample, a, an example of money. It may not be money. It may be blessings, right? You give to the church. Therefore, the church is going to pray for you. Now, I'm not saying it's a great example, but it's definitely a example, right? Or what the perpetuation of compensation is supposed to be. So another one of the very, very important steps is the next one. The law of perpetual transmutation of energy. Energy is always in motion and changing forms. This is huge. This is huge. And it's really wild because when you master law eight, nothing, nothing can take you out of your space. Right? So when you're able to transmute energy, no external energy will ev or internal energy will ever be able to take you off your game right so we have to understand that the universe works in subtle ways and this is how we understand them and how we engage in them right so this is also one of my favorites because when i'm feeling especially stuck you know, i look to this and so far, we've talked about the importance of energy and maintaining a high vibration. Of course, it all sounds good, but we know that life throws curveballs at us, and they just plain suck. But if we only had the first seven universal laws, we'd be living in fear of negative situations. This law reminds us that there's nothing to be afraid of because energy is always in flux. And better still, you have the power 
or superpower to change it. Now, this is the superpower law. And this may sound, you know, a little, that may sound a little bit like fantasy, but it's not. You know, the superpower law is a superpower. And it sounds like a superpower because it's exactly what it is. It's just one of the things that sounds obnoxiously easy, easier than it really is, though. That's the problem, right? You may have heard energy flows where attention goes. And that is the gist of the law. Who is, you know, but who's the thinker of your thoughts? You are. So by exercising your power to activate thoughts to serve you rather than the ones that they don't, you can transmute negative vibrations first into neutral ones and then into happier territory, right? So you're able, let's say somebody yells at you and you you use the first seven laws to kind of understand where maybe you could have changed the outcome of that or where maybe you were, you know, you could have improved instead of just yelling back. But you have to get to that neutral place out of your emotions before you can actually think like that. And then once you figure it out, you can maybe correct that action the next time around. So what Viktor Frankl says a very nice quote, and it's between stimulus and response, there is a space. And in that space, our power to choose our response. And in our response lies our growth and our freedom. Powerful. That's wild. So let's say you get fired from your job and you came home to find that your spouse had left you as well. Shitty things happen. And there's bound to be some low frequencies that arise. Anger, resentment, sadness, and so on. These emotions are valid and should be acknowledged. But there's a difference between acknowledging and wallowing, right? Eventually, the pity party comes to an end. And you need to pick yourself back up and upgrade your thoughts to the ones that serve you rather than the ones that keep you stuck at the pity party. Maybe you didn't like that job anyway. So this means you'll have more time to focus on finding a better one. So now your thoughts to begin, they begin to shift so that you can spend more time enjoying you and everything around you. This energy shift doesn't happen overnight, but in small steps, they're starting to look up, right? So some advice for this law is you always have the power to trigger positive change in your life by choosing better feeling thought in any given situation be aware of the stories you tell yourself and try to upgrade them into ones that get you closer to where you want to be rather than keep you stuck where you are right so this is extremely important extremely important this is how we get out of situations and this is what i was talking about with the transitioning of the subconscious by by monitoring your thoughts and figuring out why those negative thoughts were coming in to begin with, you become able to reverse that process and that thought pattern to where it no longer has relevance. And you just keep moving forward instead of taking steps backwards. But you do have to take step backwards as well. That's not saying that, you know, there's ways to do that. There's proper ways to do it. So now we're going to get to the next one, right? And and this, you know, this losing of the job, and I see in the chat is is applicable, especially over the last two years. There's a lot of things that people were trying to make others do that didn't fall within their spiritual beliefs. And if you didn't abide by what they did, then you lost your job. It happened to my family too. It happened to my wife. You know, but this is what it is. We have to understand that there's a reason that the universe is putting us through this and there's more to come after the fact of, right? So we're actually going to go a little bit over an hour today, but just to be sure, I want to make sure that we spend enough time in the last three to really dive in, right? So the law of relativity, it's all relative. This is another important one. This is perspective. Picture this. You woke up to find it oddly bright for so early in the morning, and then you realize your iPhone alarm didn't go off. The cord wasn't plugged in properly, and now the phone is dead. You're already a half hour late to work. You're scrambling, but you always make time for your favorite daily ritual that will make everything better. A morning cup of coffee from your local cafe. 
Now, I'm an avid coffee drinker. I do this all, all the time. But, of course, the barista mucked up your order again, and you ended up with a different coffee than the one you wanted. And then you rush to get to work, and you get a speeding ticket. You see the pattern? Most people would agree that that's a crappy start to the morning. But George, the homeless guy sitting outside the cafe that you probably didn't even notice, would have happily traded places with you in that moment. He doesn't have a bed to wake up in, an iPhone to charge, or a job to be late to, or even money for coffee, or a car to speed in. Perspective. Perspective. It's all relative. Perspective is key. If you look at what you've if you look at what you have in life, you'll always have more. If you look at what you don't have in life, you'll never have enough. Powerful, right? This law reminds us that experiences on their own are not good or bad. They are neutral. And this is what we talked about with, with the ETs and, and looking at perspective, right? It's our human perception, emotion, thought, judgment that evaluates experiences and the comparison of them is what creates a label of good or bad. Now, I'm not saying we're all, we all go out and get our brains removed because, you know, this is a human experience, but the law is, is a telling reminder of the power of perception. Use that perception to your benefit. A good or bad situation is not the fundamental truth. It's merely a perception. And that perception is what you're experiencing based on comparing that experience to everything else. So some advice for this one would be viewing a bad situation from another perspective may actually help transmute it into gratitude. So no matter how bad it is for you, always be someone in a worse situation. So instead of feeling like a victim, reframe it to feel grateful. That's wild. Perception is everything. We talk about it all the time. You know, you say, well, when we talk about the extraterrestrial entities, we say, well, well, you know, all of this type of race is good and all this type of race is bad. It's perception. It's perception. It's what has been implemented through programming to you. So there's no way we can't look at it. We can't paint such broad brushes. We have to, we really, really have to look at the individual case, individual by individual. And then we can maybe make judgment. But at that moment, we have to reframe it and think about perception and say, well, if I was that person, I would think that too. But my, my perspective is a bit different. So maybe, maybe it's not what it seems, right? And we can kind of go through that exercise to look at things from, a, a, not like I said, like a, not a good or bad, but from a neutral point and move forward from there because there won't be emotion attached to it most of the time. You'll see it clearly and logically. And then, then you can kind of pick out well, maybe I could have did that better. Maybe I could have did that better. And that's why the situation happened. But you have to go back to that zero point to move into that perception and really evaluate it, right? <clears throat> so I, I really, you know, I really like that one a lot. That was another one that I really, really liked. So we're going to go to step 10 or the law 10 here is the law of polarity, right? So everything has an opposite on the same continuum. Right. This is another big one. This is, they're all big. I mean, I say it for each one to kind of garner excitement, but they're all really big. You know, how do you know what heat is if you didn't experience the cold? How would you know the feeling of joy if you didn't feel sadness? You need one to experience the other. And this is the gist of polarity. So let's take a moment to be grateful for things and allow us to experience the good things. 
I live in a climate where we get cold, dreary winters. But I've learned that it's what makes the joy of spring such a wonderful experience. And what makes me love and appreciate the sun-filled hot summer days even more. Another quote, I don't know who it was written by, but it says, All truths are but half-truths, and every truth is half-false. There are two sides to everything. Opposites are identical in nature, yet different in degree. Powerful, right? So we can apply the same concept to our emotions. Through the despair of losing a loved one to illness, we can learn to appreciate our own health and not take it for granted. And the time we have with our family and friends as well. Without sadness, how will we know what joy feels like? Without one, the other ceases to exist. All of our human emotions are part of a human experience and serve a greater purpose, whether they feel good or not. And since all points on the continuum of emotion are necessary to provide a full experience of life, we can accept that negative emotion has its purpose. If we're angry or sad or frustrated, it's a valid emotion. And that is there, and it's there for a reason. What is it teaching you? We tend to resist and repress these emotions on the ground that they don't feel good. Once we go beyond that, though, there are important nuggets of information that contribute to our emotional and personal growth. It's key. Another, another key to the universe right here, right? So some advice on that. Negative emotions are inevitable but necessary. Without them, we wouldn't know the positive emotions are. The goal is to accept the emotion, and instead of focusing on it, resisting it, accepting it, and focusing on how it can help us going forward. Perspective. Instead of wallowing in it, we have to look at the other side of that coin. And that is huge. Now, this next law is going to hit home for a lot of people because it's very present, especially in today's life. The law of rhythm. Nothing is permanent. Nothing. The earth orbits around the sun. The moon travels around the earth. The, earth's complete, the earth completes a rotation every 24 hours. Seasons change, tides come and go, day turns into night, and then back into day. There are expressions of rhythm that have been occurring for millennia. Energy is always in motion, and these motions create cycles and patterns. We see examples of this in the stock market, political leaning and the circle of life. Each phase has a different purpose and function, but together they are vital to the full picture. So George Santayana has a quote that I think best fits, best fits this. To be interested in the changing of the seasons is a happier state of mind than to be hopelessly in love with just the spring. Right? So. Again, we're talking about rhythms. Nothing's forever. And rhythm is everywhere. And we tend to get attached to one specific phase without understanding the holistic picture. We like bull markets, long summers, etc., etc., because those feel good. But as we learned with the law of polarity, we in fact need the other phases just as much as they are a part of the greater whole. This law teaches us to take a hundred steps back and realize that everything has its time. And we tend to want things on our terms and timelines. <clears throat> but if we just took a breath and exercised patience, we'd see that these tides always turn. Trust the process. As in the external world, the same principle applies within us. Our thoughts Moods and emotions are ever changing. When we're sad, we often feel like we're feeling will be the feeling itself will be forever. And one of my personal favorite mantras, again, is when I'm particularly in a foul mood, 
this won't last forever. That thought creates a gradual shift up the vibrational scale. It's equally important to remember this concept when things are going well because we know that it's not permanent either. Understanding this law helps us cultivate a mindset of gratitude, which is one of the easiest, highest frequency emotions to tap into at any given moment, right? So go with the flow of the rhythm. We don't control these rhythms, but if we can learn to go with the flow rather than resist it, we'll be much happier in the long run. If you planted a vegetable garden in October, you'll be frustrated. You'll be a frustrated gardener. But if you have the patience to wait until spring, you'll be an abundant gardener, right? So some advice with this is when things are going well, appreciate it while it lasts. When things aren't going well, take comfort in knowing that better days will come. Learn to observe the ebbs and the flows of life with patience and faith and that there is always time for everything or everything has its own time, right? So this one, to me, I think is a very important one as well. And the figuring out the rhythms, again, goes into the perspective, and it gives you the ability to see other sides of the coin instead of wallowing in something that's not going to essentially you, right? So now we're getting to the last step or the last law. So I wanted to take a moment because this one is can be misconstrued as something, especially in, in today's society, is, you know, we shouldn't be talking about it. But it's the law of gender creation or gender, right? The law of gender creation requires both yin and yang. So when we're talking about this, we need both the masculine and the feminine energy, right? Both masculine and feminine energy are required in balance to create anything. Sexual reproduction of a species is a great example of this law in the physical world and in the way that most that's most obvious to us. This concept applies in the energetic world as well. You know, basically turning an idea into reality. It's creation. No creation is possible without the balance of masculine and feminine energy, right? So first of, we need to understand a very important concept. Everything, including us, has a combination of masculine and feminine energies, and we must balance them to create the things that we want. Energetically speaking, masculine energy is creative, practical, and visionary, but out of balance. Right. What? But when out of balance, I should have said it that way. It was a little bit better. But when out of balance can take the form of control, anger and conflict. Feminine energy and is intelligent, nurturing and intuitive when balanced with that masculine energy. But out of balance, it's one of vulnerability, weakness. And it's in its personal power, a weakness of personal power. And the trick is to balance these energies because only when both are being used properly can we manifest our desires into the material world. And this is the second part of this law. And it reminds us that everything, including our desires, have a gestation period in which they grow until they manifest into the physical world. This is a great example of the law of rhythm as it pertains to the creative process. Do you want to birth your baby the week after it's conceived? Or are you willing to wait nine months, the nine-month cycle, for it to grow into an infant that is capable of surviving outside of the womb? We must be patient with our desires as, as everything that has to do with, that has been, you know, within the creating world. And at first it was a seedling, and the thought that it was nurturing it with the balance of masculine and feminine energy for a period of time, a gestation period, before it actually becomes reality. And this is ever so important. So advice on this one is to embrace your masculine and feminine energies to strike a balance that nurtures and tends your ideas and desires during the inevitable gestation period before they manifest. 
So <clears throat> now we get to the last slide. This is the last slide of the whole presentation. We did it with just about an hour, which is pretty, pretty freaking good. But becoming aware of these universal laws can be life changing in so many ways. I hoped that this has helped those watching. And I really do. I hope this has brought a little more perspective to what we do and how we do it. Right. This is important to understand perception, energy, the ebbs and flows and patterns within the reality in which we walk during our waking moments and our unwaking moments, right? So <clears throat> I hope this was, you know, what it was for me, what it was for everybody else. I love going over this, reading it over again and again, because it really helps me to understand who I am and how I interact with the exterior stimulus, right? So Again, I just want I want to apologize a little bit for the beginning of the show. I had to make some statements and I know they may not have been pleasant right off the bat, but they had to be said there's some things going on in the background that are just absolutely insane and you know, while thinking about it and talking to some people about it, it's it's concerning. You know, people like myself who are out here speaking the truth don't always, you know, they don't always have the easiest path, but I'm willing to walk down that rocky, glassy path with no shoes on and socks just to make sure that we're all in a better place, you know, in years to come. So, you know, I give myself over to the cause, really. So with that being said, my name is Rob Yox. This has been Full Universe. I hope everybody enjoyed the episode. And we're going to be back in a day or two with some more information. We're going to break, probably go back to the races of, uh, you know, I like to take a break from the races from the stars every now and again because, these are important, you know, important. It's important information and it comes into the synchronicity of everything else that's happening. So, you know, with that being said, I hope everybody enjoyed it. I hope everybody has a great evening. I hope you find this broadcast with love and abundance. And uh, I love all of you. And we'll see you all in the uh, full spectrum family or the forever student family, whichever you want to call it on Telegram. So join up. And uh, oh, yeah. And we're also a part of Beyond Being Human. If you want to go ahead and check them out, we have some amazing, you know, there's some amazing things going on. You know, check out Beyond Being Human at beyondbeinghuman.org. And uh, you'll see that the full spectrum use is is over there as well. And, uh, you know, let's have some fun. Let's let's rock and roll. So with that being said, I hope everybody has a great evening. All right. See you guys around the bay.